Hey folks, Salty Seaman here coming at you with another military movie bullshit review. Today, uh, we're going to be looking at The Last Castle, uh, a little bit uh, underrated and forgotten movie, I find. Uh, I don't, don't get a lot of requests for this. I have had a few. It just came into my head the other day. I thought, what a, a good movie. You know, I've not looked at it since I, uh, I got it when it came out around when, in about 2001 on uh, VHS back then. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, I, I thought it was a very interesting, uh, kind of a, uh, you know, prison stuff was kind of all the, the rage at the time. I'd been a few years since the Shawshank Redemption came out where the obvious parallels are going to fall here. But, uh, you know, in that time, you know, uh, Shawshank came out to a modest success, but really got its following on, uh, on cable constant views on uh, HBO and TBS, so by the late '90s to early 2000s, uh, there was there was obviously a, a market for prison related drama. So we get, you know, Stephen King uh, revisiting prison again with uh, the Green Mile book and movie. HBO would do its own fictional uh, prison drama, Oz, and around this time, this movie would pop up, which I, I found more uh, in line with with Shawshank. It is is a story of redemption. As too much as uh, what Red's story was, you know, how do you, is there any coming back from doing something like killing your wife? And we kind of have a similar story of redemption here. Uh, the big difference, of course, is uh, the other main story of Shawshank is the, uh, you know, eventual freedom of an innocent man, uh, Andy Dufresne. Uh, in this movie, we do not have such innocence. We merely have the redemption story. And along the way, uh, we see uh, homages to other prison movies on both sides of the fence, as there's definitely some cool hand loot to be had here, and certainly some dirty dozen. I would kind of start off the movie with a little bit of like, just kind of the weird thing, like every prison movie does. A uh, similar thing we saw here on Chasers is the, uh, you know, the transporters always seem to come out at the, the last minute, and it's a good way to do exposition, which is why it's there. Uh, you know, they kind of cover it and saying like, Hey, he, uh, you know, the trial just started today. How could he be coming here already? And it's like, like no one's ever pled guilty and immediately got trained. Like this is the first time it's ever happened. They wouldn't be have pr their protocols in place. Like they have to know, like if he's getting convicted, he's going there and they would have to be prepared, you know, the day of, because he could, as he does in the movie, plead guilty. But again, storytelling exposition device. Uh, and I have no idea if category A is the proper terminology. If any of you ever worked in army brig life or other brig life, if they all use the same terminology, uh, please let me know. I do not recall from my four months answering phones at the Jacksonville brig. Another easy thing to hit on here is uh, Gandolfini's weight. Uh, of course, he's out of regs. Uh, by far by the army. Uh, but this is, this is one of those situations where this is a very intentional choice. It's not a matter of where well, we're just going to have an actor that's out of regs to be playing a service member. Cause that's who we got. You know, we kind of saw that in Dawn of the dead a little bit our day of the dead. I'm sorry, but this is very intentional. They're, they're, they're going out of their way to show like he is not army uh, regular. He's not, you know, he's a, you know, as we see his character here in the beginning, you know, he's, he, he's a, he's a, a work, a, Want to be Pogue, but he's a he's a desk jockey. He's a career long uh, uh, incarceration uh, officer, uh, security officer, whatever, and he lives the good life. He, he's uh, he's senior ranking. He's let himself get out of regs, and uh, you know he, he can't. He does it because he can. Who's going to call him on it? You know he's he's a colonel in a way off brig somewhere. So that that is really good at establishing. Now his actual weight, even by really pushing an army standards, maybe a bit much, but you know, the, the those degrees of, uh, you know, out of regs is, you know, not worth it. It's, it's a little too nitpicky and it gives us the great James Gandolfini. So of course we let it slide. Oh geez. Mark Ruffalo's in this among a few other people. Wow. Totally do not remember this. And, uh, give it up for Robert Redford. He, uh, he's looking good here. Uh, 2001, he was pretty, uh, Getting pretty elderly there. He, he looks good. I'll give the movie credit where credit's due, definitely, on uh, the subtle exposition of who he is and his background here. Um, 
maybe you don't quite catch every little bit of it if you're a civilian, but it's enough to know he's important. We see, you know, he gets off the uh, he gets off the bus to the jail or to the prison, and uh, you know, we see his ribbon rack. You know, if you know what the top his top ribbon is, uh, Medal of Honor. Uh, you know, which is stand out. Any military person would, that would stand out right away. But even if you didn't catch that coming in, you, you, you they make mention of his. He's allowed to keep his academy ring, so he's a West Point grad. So we know his his background's pretty elite, and he's got. You know, you can probably figure out even as a civilian those what those three stars mean. He's he's a pretty big deal. So uh, it's it's a nice way of kind of introducing this character through a a. Fairly fun, subtle exposition, you know, not not overdoing it with like, you know, an info dump on a uh, walk or something. And there, there's a good bit of storytelling here. Uh, you know, we, we set up the crux of the plot. Uh, he is a, a f- definitely uh, Colonel Winter is a fawning uh, fanboy of the general who's uh, obviously a war hero of some sort. Uh, as we find out, he's got a book. He was Excited to get it signed by his uh, new prisoner, and then he overhears him. Uh, basically, the the uh, I, I said the, the ego of uh, of, of our, our good general here, you know, and uh, you know, this is kind of once we get into the uh, where he he gives his uh, crimes uh, speech to the uh, the inmates, we find out exactly what he did. Uh, just another indicative of his just his arrogance. You know he's he's very you know not not really he's not not re- uh, realizing he's being overheard. He's you know getting you know dismissing him you know as a wannabe as a uh, you know as a play soldier essentially. Of course you know hurts his feelings. He's you know he goes from not even thinking the guy should be there and you know complete hero worship to you know he's now just another prisoner to him. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a good, just a good example of, of watching the general's uh, arrogance uh, kind of beat at him. You know, he's, he's here for, he's here impartially because of that. And now his life's probably just gotten a lot worse than it could have been for the same arrogance. So a former POW doesn't know that another former POW uh, that he served time with in the hell that was Hanoi. Uh, doesn't know until he's told by his son in prison uh, many years later. That's some fucking bullshit. The POWs are a pretty close-knit bunch. They 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 know each other. They It, it comes out when things like that happen. He would have known a long time ago he was dead. There is, of course, the oddness of the, uh, the Marine in a uh, Army brig uh, as far as I, I recall in the whole movie, he's the only non-army in here. I don't think that's too unusual. Sometimes, like, I, I think that could just be a, a slotting thing, uh, government bureaucracy. I totally see it. So I don't, I don't think a calling bullshit on that one is uh, is warranted, actually. You really, uh, I, I like the love what this movie is doing uh, with Colonel Winter character and really establishing him as a... Uh, He's kind of a megalomaniacal fiend. You know, here's this. Uh, he said he went to the war college. So this is the, like, he is the epitome of, it's very good research in the military. Like if you want to see someone who never actually did the shit in combat, but like did everything else in his service to like seem like a, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's a definition of an armchair warrior pogue, you know, and, and they are kind of a, you know, it's like either do it or don't, don't take, don't don't it, it's almost a form of a uh, stolen valor. You, you're close you do it just enough to make people think you're some kind of badass and of course you're, you're in the service you know your service should be commended but those guys really you know th- they have that that in that combat warrior envy so bad and here you got it in a, what is a sociopath put in charge of you know uh put in charge of a prison so basically you know you could even kind of convey maybe the army uh, he was. He tried to go into uh, maybe infantry or special forces, and the army maybe psychologically profiled him as like, "No, you're better suited for this or that." I don't. I mean, I I don't remember if we get more. As I continue on, we'll see if we get more uh, backstory on Colonel Winter that I don't remember. But I, kind of getting that vibe and the, the exhibition they thrown out with him, and and, and just why the army wouldn't entrust him 
in such a position of, you know, and they, they put his cruel power to use in a prison or we see he, he, he greatly oversteps uh, his power and uh, rights as given by uh, military UCMJ and brig regulations. Uh, if you want to get technical on what he's doing wrong here. And a great thing we see here with the, uh, the general's character, because of course he's the kind of guy who memorized the, uh, the prisoners, uh, the prisoners conduct code manual or whatever the army calls it uh, before going in there, because he's the kind of guy who would. So uh, another, another nice touch as we see this, uh, this, this game of chess being played here between him and the, and Colonel winter. And here's an interesting crux of the movie. Uh, I think, you know, this is where winter, if, if he truly, truly wanted, uh, you know, to improve the prison and make it, a, you know, and, and make it a, you know, not like necessarily a great place, but, uh, you know, something that would even just on his own personal thing, look good on his eval or his fit rep. You know, if he's looking to make a general, maybe that's Pat, maybe he's, he's past that. He's never going to get past his current predicament, but you know, obviously the general is someone he could utilize in a positive way, you know, and, and as you know, it's, it's showing, you know, he's obviously this great leader, you know, that will establish, you know, before he did what he did, which again, we'll get to, because I think it's really important in, in terms of how much you sympathize with the character, but also just, you know, this is a positive force. He could look to him and to be a leader in here during his time. And while he's the warden, you know, and he could create, he, he could use him as a great tool, but of course he doesn't do it because he is a, uh, he, he is established. He is a very, just kind of a sociopathic and petty man. They couldn't have gave him a call ahead of time. Uh, so he doesn't come walk. The, the big boss doesn't walk into a total shock to see his wall torn down. Okay. The desire for, uh, you know, structure, the desire for purpose, you know, and, and, and as the general uh, here uh, goes on to, uh, to try to give that to them, you know, give them something other than just, you know, just counting the bleak days down. It's, uh, again, there, 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 there are definitely some parallels here to, uh, to certain incidents. And uh, so I go back to Shawshank, which I, I always feel like I said, this, that if it wasn't for Shawshank, this wouldn't have been made. But at the same time, it, it you know, it, it adds a different perspective. You know, the, the prior military background is it, it kind of it, it really is more of a B plot when you get down to it and you look into a stuff like this. You know, they're giving the, they're rebuilding rank structure from their military days because that's that, that's something they know. That's something they all have in common. It's a bond they can link to and they can they can understand a organizational structure uh, once again. You know, even if they have to like codename it amongst themselves, because again, they are not, uh, they're not soldiers anymore. And, you know, Aguilar's not a Marine anymore. That's, that's the, the long and short of it. And, uh, in a point, you know, we're about, I, if I recall, we're about to get to here. Also, I can't say that I'm not tickled that they, uh, use the name, they use the term chief as a non, uh, military title for, uh, the general here. So yeah, I like that. This is the part of the movie where they lose me. I I was enjoying it. Gets so the speech is so cloying, and I, I get what it's trying to do, but it's just so it's sappy. And then you're trying to get me to believe a uh, a brig full of soldiers is going to uh, remember, no, and remember and sing in good key on harmony the the Marine Corps hymn. Uh, no, I'm not buying this. I'm not buying this scene at all. Uh, man, it's really tough to buy. Like, you know, the guy, I mean, the character's a sociopath and he's completely petty and obviously a monster. Like he, you know, ordered, he completely ordered the death of, uh, Mr. Aguilar. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is about the point in the movie. I didn't realize at, you know, it's losing me probably completely unrealistic that I would ever get away with it. But, uh, I do love the faux salute. I really, really do. Oof. Some really bad green screening here. And thus you get a really, uh, you know, I think a, a good crux of the movie here is when you, you get 
what the general did in great detail. He, you know, he, he committed a he committed a war crime. He he disobeyed orders and went on bad intel that led to eight of his men being killed. He's honestly, you know, might be slightly lucky that he wasn't looking at a, uh, you know, execution if he wasn't the war hero that he was. That's a situation in under UCMJ he could be executed for. So, and it brings into, you know, his pride and his arrogance, which the movie's been good at doing a good job of breaking down as he's trying to, as he's relating with his fellow prisoners and former soldiers from kind of the, the wall of, you know, arrogance he comes from. Uh, so the, 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 it, all in all, it's a good character study, and it, it kind of it, it helps you paint him as like, you know, whatever good he might be doing, however many great speeches he might be giving to these fellow prisoners, he's kind of an arrogant prick at heart. You know, and I appreciated that about the movie, because like I said, it can get a bit sappy and over-dramatized in, in moments. Uh, this uh, I I can't say I didn't really enjoy the uh, the whole climax of the uh, the battle for the the castle. It's it just fun, a really well done, it's showing how ingenious and reverting to their soldier training they are, and they manage to you know outthink and outmaneuver the prison, and they get to this situation. Uh, yes, there's a lot of. <laughs> There's a lot of very super lax things that would happen in a real military brig that uh, would take to allow the situation to get where it's at. From a narrative purposes, there there's stuff you can kind of get over to let the plot get to where it was. It's clever enough. I can forgive it. I can forgive it. Like everyone has a sloppy appearance. It is a military brig. You're required to have a standard. And uh, brig awardees generally do not have hair. I don't know if that is uh, universal across the board but to my knowledge yes these guys should all be bald you go tell Robert Redford shave his head but uh, <laughs> uh, we get to the end where uh, Robert Redford's character uh, the general is unfortunately taken down but uh, there's you know a, a part of the unbelievability of course you know you could say hey this colonel's given this order to fire on this guy and everyone's kind of turning up it's really symbolic and beautiful but hey, that sounds like some bullshit. It, it de- in a situation like this where it is very seems to be a very unlawful order, you know, to fire live rounds into an unarmed man, uh, not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, his command, especially once he gets usurped by his XO, who's like no, and he's kind of given almost a, 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 a verbal like this guy's not fit for command. I'm taking over, which maybe he should have done at this point. But quibbling here. So this this part, it really isn't as egregious as you might think it would be. However, the entire situation of how this, uh, you know, prison got taken over like this. Yeah, but we're going to have to let it go in this situation. But, I mean, his obvious alternate was to order some people to non-lethally, uh, uh, you know, tackle him, uh, contain him, something. He's like, no, you must shoot him. Which is his downfall, which which feeds into his own arrogance and psychopathy, and you know just his whole thing. You know, we watch one character go off the, the deep end on his own uh, his own side of his his flaws, and another character attempt to recover from his own prideful flaws, and and I think that makes the whole thing makes a very nice uh, narrative, you know. And and I like you know we put it we have a prison structure here, we have a uh, we have a military structure here. Yeah, they they, t- they took a lot. At the end of the day, this they took a lot of liberties, especially with how the brig system works. I'm not going to claim to be an expert, but I know enough just to, to to recognize just patterns and procedures are not quite adhered to. Uh, discipline within is not quite what it would really be up to in a in a real military brig. But overall, it it, it it's a it's a good movie. It's a good dramatic role. There's lots of great symbolism. There's lots of callbacks. You know, to obviously, I, I think it's it's Maker, which is, you know, the reason the movie was greenlit was Shawshank Redemption. It pays tribute to uh, stuff like the, you know, The Great Escape, uh, The Dirty Dozen, uh, among, you know, other other great prison movies. And, uh, you know, overall, I, it's a movie worth watching. It's a solid B-plus from me. 
the military bullshit isn't too egregious. And uh, that's about all I got to say for it. Tune in to the Salty Seaman next time. Uh, next movie, no idea right now, but uh, I'll be letting you guys know soon. Peace.